What a spectacular finish to the year upcoming here at HBO Boxing. Now let's have some more fun here in Newark. As Zab Judah, you've known him for years, ever since he almost made the United States Olympic team in 1996, goes from welterweight back down to junior welterweight, probably his most natural weight class, and the class in which he has been far and away the most effective to take on knockout artist Lucas Matisse Roy Jones. Zab's 33 and making a move down in weight. There isn't a particularly great history for that, but in these circumstances, you like it. What's up? Yeah, I like it because not only is he going back down in weight, but Zab is making a lot of personal changes. He's gotten rid of all the gold teeth, all the diamonds, all the bling bling, all the friends. He's given his life to the Lord, which is a great thing. And I think this is the best move he possibly could make because now he's back to being the real Zab Judah at the real Zab Judah weight class. And an opportunity to become a star again, solely and simply because of all the tremendous talent which is now congregated in the 140 pound weight class, Max. But on the other hand, he takes on a younger, stronger fighter in Matisse. You saw Matisse's brother reach this stage of his career and come a cropper against Paul Williams. Is it possible that Lucas has more goods than his brother? Well, yes, it is. He looks like the better prospect of the two at this point. But, you know, his brother ran into a prime time Paul Williams, who's one of the very best pound for pound fighters in boxing. And the reason Paul Williams won that fight more than any other, I think, is because Paul Williams has an astoundingly good chin for such a tall, lanky guy. Because Matisse hit Williams on that chin. Williams and Matisse has not had knockout power, and Williams stood up to it. This Matisse also has knockout power, and if he hits Zab Judah on the chin, let's just say Zab has been a lot chinnier than Paul Williams has been throughout his career. But a really in shape, motivated Zab Judah, it's tough to hit that guy. He looks in shape and motivated tonight, Jim. Now we mentioned the loaded weight class, junior welterweight. We've got a couple of other very significant fights in this class before the end of the year. Our first big fight of next year may well take place in this weight class. And look at all the stars, Max. Yeah, and it's hard to say who's the best. Khan's the tallest and longest and most talented, maybe. Alexander's the southpaw, has the best chin of the three, it looks like. Timothy Bradley's the most doggedly determined and accomplished of the three. That's the cream of the crop in the division, and they have a strong supporting cast. I thought, uh, many thought, Katelnik beat Alexander and, and, and lost a, a bad hometown decision for Alexander. And you see the rest of these kind of colorful contenders. Some of them can punch, some of them are athletic. Um, Zab is both. Matisse can certainly punch, and uh, he's on the list because of that tonight. Usually when we go to that graphic, there's a big distortion because the guys who have the titles aren't as good as the notables on page two. In this division, those three guys with titles are all real stars. So this is a solid weight class. And now here's the tale of the tape for Judah against Matisse. You see the five-year age advantage for the Argentine fighter. Two-inch height advantage as well. Arm length advantage of one inch for Matisse measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. He weighed in right at the 140-pound limit and tonight has gone up to 151 pounds. So he'll have a functional nine-pound weight advantage in the ring against Judah. Let's go to Michael Buffer. Oh, that, no, let's let's let him walk in, as a matter of fact. And uh, and first of all, uh, let's take a look at Matisse's last win against a name fighter, Vivian Harris of Guyana. Uh, now, if you saw Harris recently on a pay-per-view undercard in Los Angeles, uh, getting annihilated by Ortiz in one round, you know that he does not have a lot left. And he went out in four rounds against Matisse, although the stoppage comes at a moment when Harris is standing up and does not seem to be all that badly damaged. And look at Matisse's right eye after four rounds with the supposedly shot Harris. Now making his entrance to the ring, Lucas Martin Matisse. Well, you saw the graphic about all the fights in Argentina. First time back in the United States in a couple of years. Event challenge for this man? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a heck of a challenge for this man because he's never been in the United States against this caliber of an opponent. So being here against this type of a fighter, a step up in talent is a really, really big challenge for him. 
but the step up from Matisse in preparation for the fight, Max, he's been training with Sergio Martinez in Martinez's camp in Oxnard, California, and you can only get better when you are rubbing shoulders with one of the four or five best fighters in the world. And Martinez is a southpaw, and he's at a slick southpaw, and that's exactly what he's facing tonight in Zab Judah. Has a kind of a sneaky lead right hand, Matisse does. He throws it nice and easy, and that could be useful against Zab. Strong right hand puncher, and of course, you know the history of right hand lead against, or straight right hand against a southpaw. Judah's a southpaw with a lot of athletic talent, quick footwork, and counter punching skill. So there's danger in every time Matisse launches that right against him. Zab is one of these guys, and you, it sounds like you could say about any fighter, but you can't. He could really beat or lose to anyone on any given night because he's shown the vulnerability with the chin and, and, and the, the tendency to be distracted at times in the ring, and yet he's so quick and hits so hard and is quite skilled, it really makes him live against anyone. Do you suppose the Rocky music plays fresh and, you know, sort of lively in Argentina? Zab Judah's had one fight in the 140-pound weight class since making the decision to move back to junior welterweight for welterweight. That was against the spidery, long-armed Jose Armando Santa Cruz. And this was a one-sided blowout for Judah, who scored a third-round knockout of Santa Cruz, particularly doing damage with his quick right hook against the longer-armed, slower fighter. And that builds a lot of confidence for Judah as he comes into tonight. Now making his entrance to the ring, Zab Super Judah! You can see that Zab Judah still has a fan following, a fairly ardent fan following, and it'll come alive if he scores a winning streak here in the 140-pound weight class. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen from the Prudential Center here in Newark, New Jersey, USA, Golden Boy Promotions, Main Events and Super Judah Promotions present the featured bout of the evening. On the line, two world rankings. Pardon me, the number two world rankings for the IBF and WBO. This is 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant NABO Junior Welterweight Championship. Sponsored by Tecate Cerveza con Caracter and DeWalt Tools, guaranteed tough. Sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Chairman Tony Orlando, Commissioner Aaron Davis. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, Joseph Pasquale, Waleska Roldan, and Hilton Whitaker. Inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Earl Brown. And now, for the thousands in attendance here in Newark, New Jersey, and the millions watching boxing HBO After Dark, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver with black, official weight, 140 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 27 victories without a defeat. 25 KOs from Trelu, Chubut, Argentina, the undefeated. Lucas Martin Matisse. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue with silver, officially weighing in at 139 pounds. His professional record, 39 victories, including 27 knockouts with six defeats. From Brooklyn, New York, the former undefeated. Junior welterweight world champion and former undisputed welterweight champion of the world, Zab Baby. Super Judah.
Lucas from the oven for a second. Zap. Let's play the ring. Let's play the ring. All right, Lucas, Zab, you received your instructions in the dressing room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. I want you to protect yourselves at all times. Anything from here down is going to be considered low. Anything from here down is going to be considered low. All right, touch him up. Touch him up. Let's go. The maybe half dozen times in his career that Zab Jude has been in tip-top shape, he's looked like a million bucks. As Roy Jones mentioned, he seems to be in tip-top shape tonight. Sure can he still like a, look like a million bucks? Because if he can, there may be multiple millions in his not-so-distant future. He pulled up his shirt yesterday at the meeting to show us his Bernard Hopkins belly. Don't know if he has matched Hopkins' 27-inch waist, about which Bernard was so proud back in the day. But he looks great. Matisse among other personal idiosyncrasies, likes to tattoo himself. I did not notice the rat tail in the meeting yesterday, so we didn't get to uh, interpret its significance. He has had it in previous fights, I'm told. And right there, with the awkwardness of the way he threw that punch and the way his feet crossed, you see the reason why so many ringside experts are picking Judah to score an earlier middle round knockout tonight. The feeling is, at some point, Matisse will make a mistake, and the vastly more experienced Judah will take advantage. Well, Judah's showing me something already. He's starting out smartly by using his jab to gauge this guy to find out what kind of power he has, feel his power before he just jumps out and tries to explode. This is very smart in his favor because he is the most experienced fighter. So don't go out there and show him your whole hand yet. Find out what you did it with, then you open up on him. And Matisse also did a smart thing because he came out and started first with the jab on, on uh, Zab Judah. Matisse jabbing to the body there. Now Judah begins to work upstairs with the jab. One, two, three, four, five jabs. Judah tries the left hand. Matisse dunks under. Hard right hand hook inside by Judah. You see Zab capable of those did you see that kind of moves. See, he pulled one just a, a moment ago defensively. And he looks much sharper punching-wise at 140 than he did at 147. Punches look much crisper tonight. Straight left hand lands for Jab Judah. Most effective punches the round so far. A little right hook by Judah inside, and that straight left by Judah moments ago. And you definitely see a beautiful uh, difference in speed with Zab Judah with his offense and his defense, but he does have to be careful because Matisse, Matisse is a very good puncher. Looking at Judah when he looks like this, you wonder how he could have lost to a slower, more mechanical fighter like Carlos Baldemir, or a guy with so much less power like Corey Spence. He told us in the fighter meeting yesterday, he trained two weeks for the uh, Baldemir fight. Well, that's one way to lose. <laughs> Deep breath, right, relax with it. Let's do it again. Water, give me the water. Calm down. Give me the water. Slow it down. I got it. I got it. Take a minute, take a minute. Take some water. Good, how you feel? Take mine again. All right, he's doing Golden Glove stuff. Take your time, all right? He's just looking for one shot. Just take your time. Pop, 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 pop. Let him get it. Oh, when you threw the jab, you complicated things for him. And don't lunge in because he's waiting for you. But he knows that you're strong. He knows that you're strong. He knows your power. He knows that things are complicated. Rinse it out. That's it, rinse out. Rinse out the mouthpiece. Be patient, Lucas, and work that side. Upstairs and downstairs. And careful, it'll come. Don't worry about it. Copy box numbers in round one. Judah 9 of 40, Matisse 8 of 58. Judah landed 7 of 33 jabs. But the punches, which in my view won the first round for him, were the other two. A quick right hook inside and a straight left hand into the teeth of Matisse.
incidentally, just as in the first fight, southpaw against conventional fighter, possibility of head clashes. Judah has already checked his scalp once after their heads came together in round one. Midnight plus 30 minutes in Newark, New Jersey. Zab Judah returning to the 140 pound weight class against unbeaten knockout artist Lucas Matisse of Argentina. Been a beautiful fight so far. I think uh, for Zab's situation, he has to stay patient here and try to push this kid past the amount of rounds he's used to going, which I think is about four or five. Uh, in Matisse's case, he needs to hurry up and try to put his right hand on Zab and try to change the, the way this fight is going right now. Yeah, you know, it, both guys are doing certain things well, as you point out, Roy, I think, but from Zab in particular with his speed advantage, it would be nice to see him start to set up some real offense by himself and not just hope that Matisse starts swinging wildly so he can counter. Because although he's throwing that jab and an occasional shot like that, He's not really opening Matisse up. And it's not smart for him to open Matisse up yet. He's given up nine pounds, maybe 10. And Matisse is a power puncher. So if he goes in and attacks Matisse right now, he gives him the best possible chance of landing that big punch. And that's the only thing that he feels is dangerous about Matisse. So you're saying wait a few more rounds. He has to. The kid hasn't been going more than four rounds most of his career. So why go out there and give him his advantage? He's best inside the four rounds. Don't go out there and give him the disadvantage uh, or give him an advantage on you. Matisse's side feels that if Zab goes past four rounds, he starts to fade. Well, I understand that, but as we all know, experience is a big thing here. Matisse does not have the experience of going 10 and 12 rounds. Zab does. And Zab believes that without the lifestyle inconsistencies which plagued him in the past, he isn't going to wear down after four rounds now as has been the case sometimes in the past. Plus, he's not fighting bigger guys the way he was in the welterweight division. And incidentally, you made a great point, Roy. Early in the round, we started to hear some fans expressing discontent, you know, perhaps not thinking that Judah's going after Matisse enough. Those fans have no clue that Matisse entered the ring weighing 151 and Judah 142. They also don't have a clue that he has a 98% knockout ratio. <laughs> There's the discontent again. And I'm not really sure what that's about because they're both working pretty hard in there, even if there have not been sensational exchanges. Hey, yo, Right, right. Okay. December 11, HBO Sports presents the premiere of Lombardi, an in-depth documentary about the legendary Green Bay Packers coach. December 15, it's the debut of the next reality series from HBO, 24-7 Penguins Capitals, Road to the NHL Winter Classic. Follow Sidney Crosby, Alex Ovechkin and company, leading up to their New Year's Day matchup. You know, he's not coming in. He's not coming in because he's waiting for you. He didn't know you could box. He thought you were just knocking out people. But perfect job, perfect job. Patience, just the patience I wanted. Keep it up. Very good work, Lucas. Keep a jab. And hit him in the arms. Whatever you hit him with, he's gonna, you can hurt him. And he knows that. He knows you can hurt him. Keep working that. December 11, Vince Lombardi. I'm just sitting here thinking in shock that there are quite a number of professional football fans out there who probably don't know that much about Lombardi and Bart Starr and Forrest Gregg and Ray hey, Nitzke hey, hey, and on, Paul Horning and Jim Taylor. All right. That'll be a great show. You all right? You know, Go. Matisse Harold remember all those, remembers all those guys <laughs> vividly. <laughs> Harold, how do you have it through three? I, I even remember Y.A. Tittle. Two to nothing, 20 to 18, Zeb Judah. Jim, if patience wins your fights, Lucas Matisse is winning this fight. But I don't think patience wins your fights. I mean, Matisse is wa waiting way too long. In the first two rounds, Zeb Judah at least landed that nice right jab, landed a few nice straight left hands, did a little bit of fighting to keep this fight interesting. On the other hand, Matisse using his patience to, in that ring. I mean, if this guy's a big banger, I wish he'd let go of one. We'll see how much he's got. Anyway, two to nothing, Zeb Judah. You, you heard Matisse's corner reveal some of their strategy, saying he didn't know you could box. Hit him in the arms, hit him wherever. It, it seems as though it's to confuse Judah, it's to extend Judah. The strategy was for Matisse not to go out and start winging shots early.
discussing his work in Sergio Martinez's training camp in Oxnard, California to prepare for the fight. Matisse, awestruck, said, nobody works like Martinez, it's unreal, you couldn't possibly do all that work. This just shows you he hasn't been in a championship level training camp before with a championship level fighter. No, he hasn't before, but now he has. And right now you're seeing the effects of it because he's smart, fighting very smart. He's moving to his left, staying away from floor, I mean, from Zab's straight left hand and Zab's left uppercut, which are his best punches. So he's fighting a very smart fight right now. And it looks like he may be trying to go back into the archive of tapes and wear Zab down. But I don't think he's wearing him down with work this time, but that's what he's trying to do. He is throwing some, Matisse is throwing some crackling body shots, but Zab is showing a tight defense, even to the body, catching them on his elbows. Yeah, but the bad thing about that is you can't sit around and catch too many because eventually one will slip in if you don't throw some. And your, and your arms wear down. Exactly. And with all this talk about wearing people down, one fact is inescapable. In 27 fights, Matisse has been past the fourth round once, one time, a 10-round fight. But 26 of those fights are four rounds or less. This, this crowd doesn't sound like it, it's going to get past the four round if they don't start fighting a little more. Like nice that. Shot. Body shot by Matisse. Zab Judah landed a left straight down the middle. Matisse smiled at him as if to say, okay, you landed something. There you There's another one. Give me water, 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 water. Give me water. Don't pour no water on his head. Yeah, yeah, Zach. That's why I tell you, keep your hands up. He's doing like this. Yeah, check him. Check him, okay? Yo, All right. Tiny cut. Don't worry about it. No big deal. You good? You broke well, several schemes. You messed him up with the, the jab. You, brought, you got him crazy. It's an exceptional round. Exceptional round. Be careful. He got you with that uppercut. Keep working. Be patient. Here you see Zach step back off of the left hook lead by Matisse with a beautiful left uppercut right on the chin, and it, 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 Matisse took it well because he backed back and tapped his chin as, as to say, look, I can take that. At the end of the round, you see him exchange, and there's a bad hit, but that may have caused a cut over Zab's left eye. Back up, back up. And I hope he keeps himself composed here and doesn't let that get to him. Zab was upset at the end of the round. It must have been the butt which bothered him. Now we're into the fourth round, and remember, Matisse has been past the fourth only once in 27 fights. Harold Letterman gave the third round to Matisse. He did all the punching in the third round. There's a little bit of blood under Zab's left eye on a cheekbone, and it appears that cheekbone has swelled up. So I'm guessing Zab felt the butt was intentional. And that was the reason for his fit of peak at the end of the round. Yeah, but I don't think it was really intentional. I don't either. can't tell, but I don't think it was intentional. I don't think so either. I think Matisse is just an aggressive fighter whose head is coming. Exactly. And you know it, like we discussed before, when a right-hander and a southpaw fighter come together, there's bound to be some headbutts. Do you see Lucas Matisse's confidence growing in here, Roy? Yes, I do. He seems like he's doing most of the punching now, and he's beginning to believe that he can hang with a next-level fighter. He's more level fluid. Fighter. He's not nearly as stiff as he was in the first round. He has gotten into the fight against Zab Judah. But we'll find out about his experience with these later rounds, the ones past round four, because he doesn't have much experience at that. But that's what may come into play here. But we'll see. And now it's clear that there is a bloody cut, a small one, just outside Judah's left eye. Blood is beginning to trickle from the cut. Judah has to keep with his jab and quit letting Matisse lead with all the punches because if he continues to lead, eventually he's going to catch the other one. There you go. But Matisse is fighting a very smart fight here for a guy who doesn't have much experience against top-level fighters. So maybe the sparring helped him out a lot. Don't push his head down. We saw the brilliant down. left uppercut in replay that Judah landed in the last round. He landed that punch twice against Miguel Cotto in Madison Square Garden, and when he landed it the second time, whether unintentionally or intentionally, Cotto planted a punch right on his cup. And after that, Judah didn't land his uppercut anymore. <laughs> 
Zab there is starting to actually land the jab. When he's not really landing the jab, when he's sort of just pawing with it or using it as a range finder or a kind of stay away from me punch, it's not nearly as effective, I don't think, as when he really commits to it and lands it. I think he's doing a good job with his patience, with his attitude, with his new character. I think it's very smart of him to be patient and be smart in this fight. Take a little sip. Hey. Hey, you doing great? All right? You got to stay the way, though. Huh? You, you got you to stay just like that. Compose. Take the round. Remember, you're putting the rounds in the bank. Yo, listen, start letting that left hand go. Even you don't look, look, fake, look, do this here. Pop, 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 pop. When you go, then let the, let the, let the real shit go. Pop, 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 pop. That's how you got to steal the fight. Between three, if you look at that three, graphic, three them, you see the difference between Zab Judah at 140 pounds throughout his career as opposed to at 147 pounds, multiple fights in both weight classes from a CompuBox standpoint. It's pretty graphic. He throws nearly 15 punches more per round at 140 uh, pounds and 11 more jabs per round. Now, tonight, in the first three rounds, he threw a total of 151 punches. That's 50.3 punches a round. So farther down toward where he's been in the 147 pound class, and that probably has something to do with the strength and power of Lucas Matisse. Yes, it does, and he has to put something on Matisse to show him that he has punch of power as well, or Matisse will try to walk right through him. You know, Yoel Judah, that father and trainer, said something very interesting in the corner just now. He said, I want you to, and, and the gist of it was, basically, hit him a couple shots and move away. That's how you're going to steal this fight. We're only in the fifth round. Zab's a heavy favorite, and already Yoel feels Zab's going to have to steal the fight. Very telling. But sometimes, of course, the trainer will keep trying to generate respect for the opponent to keep his fighter focused and concentrated. And, and maybe they see something more in Matisse. And the main, you know, the most important thing is to get that win. Still for a heavy favorite with, with the expectation of looking sensational, I think Matisse's, maybe it's his boxing ability. Roy, what is it that's already making them think a little differently? It's his boxing ability and the fact that he's a strong puncher, so they don't want Floyd to get, I mean, uh, Zab to get caught up into trying to knock him out or throwing big punches with him because then you make yourself susceptible to the big shot. And Matisse is definitely is still a very powerful puncher. He's a bigger fighter right now, and it wouldn't be smart for Zab to go in and trade with him. Indeed, you saw there, Zab back out rather than to trade with Matisse. He's made that choice a couple of times here in this round. Attack straight out, which is not the Break, wisest punch, thing for punch, Zab a couple punch. times. When I say don't punch, don't punch. No, if, uh, if Yoel Judah's watching carefully, I don't see how he could have missed it that Matisse is a far more confident and comfortable fighter now than he was in rounds one and two. And incidentally, just to belabor the point, this is the second time in his career that Matisse's been this far in a fight. He's in round five for only the second time in 28 fights. And there, the right hand brings the blood back outside the left eye of Judah. <laughs> now Judah suddenly opens up and throws two good left crosses in a row. You gotta be careful though, don't run down the pipe. And a third go. left break, 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 cross break, break, and a break, right break, break. hook. You gotta be really right. careful with head, but. Watch your head, all right? Earl Brown's looking go. for that too. Yeah. Good referee. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Breathe deeply, breathe deeply, breathe and hold it. Let it go, you okay? Good. You see that when you're on the inside, 
He can't catch you. He only hit you once. But he's waiting for you because he doesn't know what to do. He broke his schemes. Be patient. Be patient. Look at that graphic. Look at that graphic. That's a stunning contrast. Listen, but give me this here. Give me one, two, threes. One, two, three, and then step around. One, two, three, and then, then double jab. One, two, three, four. Step around him. You score on points. Keep scoring him, all right? You see the slow ass punch he's throwing? He, yo, he, when you throw hitting him, he get frantic. He starts swinging wild. So guess what he's doing? Second chance, guys. Always finish off with the left. Stunning graphic, which showed you that we're looking at the fight game equivalent of a football game between an all-passing team and an all-running team. <laughs> Matisse has the ground game going, 47 punches to the body. Zab is flying upstairs above him, 51 punches to the head. Harold, how do you have it? <laughs> okay, Jim, 48, 47, three rounds to two, Zab Judah. I tell you, Jim, it's not the most exciting fight I've ever seen in my life. Very tactical fight. I thought Zeb pulled ahead in round five when he landed some nice left hands. But I wish the devil he would pick up the pace. I mean, sometimes you wait five minutes saying, will Zeb Judah ever throw a punch? I mean, now he's starting to work that right jab a little, but he's been terribly inactive. You know, when you compare the Zeb Judah tonight to the Zeb Judah, what he's, you know, that you've seen in the past, he's just not getting busy. It's really amazing. On the other hand, Lucas Batista one rounds three and four because he did all the punching. Three to two, Zab Judah. No, I, I, I get a great point repeated to me from our production truck that, that plays into all of that. Judah has fought 25 rounds in the last three years due to his suspension as the result of what happened in the Mayweather fight in Las Vegas and the other vagaries in his boxing life. So. 25 rounds in three years against a worker bee like Matisse, who hasn't gone rounds in fights, but has in, been getting into the ring and knocking people out on a regular basis. What's that, what Zab still has not done in this fight is imposed his boxing skill consistently. When he had success in the last round, it was sort of pot shot and counter punches that were snapping Matisse's head back. But it wasn't coming off the jab. It wasn't stuff that Zab was creating so much, you know, in a larger strategy. And Matisse is beginning to focus a little more upstairs. He landed a quick left hook on Judah's jaw in the last exchange. Yeah, he let Matisse throw too many punches ahead of him. Matisse is starting all of the engagements, and that's allowing him to land the, the better punches in the combination. I think the key to winning the fight for Judah is his jab. His jab is fast and straight and good. Matisse isn't quick enough to counter it. Zab should keep throwing the jab. And, and throw it to land it, as Absolutely. opposed to just throwing it for the sake of it. Best way to win the fight, in my view. Good body shot by don't Matisse. Punch, don't punch, don't punch. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Judah's talking to us. I'm not sure what he said. I believe he said, I'm, gonna, I'm going he for it. it. Yeah. Like he's about to open up on Matisse. He probably feels Matisse is wearing down a little bit. Oh, that's what he meant by going for it, I guess. Break, break. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. When Zab is busy, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, just like that. Quick right hook by Judah at the same moment that Matisse was firing a shot to Judah's belly. How are you doing? Good? Good? Good. How's your legs? Good? Good. Now listen, let's double up that left. Now, when you go in with the right, follow it up with the left, even if it doesn't reach. But be careful with the counter punches. With the right, double it up with the left. Just take your time. Listen, you got to listen. Start, start picking the punch. Start hitting with one twos, and then hit him with one two threes. And then step around. That's what you watch. Keep, just get them points in. You're doing great. Don't worry about nothing else. And keep your hands Excellent up. Excellent fight, baby. Excellent. Keep your hands up. Stay with it. Keep, don't make no mistakes. Keep them close. Vale. Vamos. Bien ordenadito. Bien ordenadito. Organized. Not really sure what happened to Lucas Matisse's right eye in less than four rounds against Vivian Harris to cause it to swell completely shut. He looks unmarked here after five rounds with Zab Judah. Copy box numbers through six. Or six rounds, I should say. Judah 68 out of 318, throwing 53 punches per round now. 
And Matisse, 69 out of 335. So Matisse is throwing more, particularly throwing to the body. And they're landing at about the same rate. Armando Santa Cruz at junior welterweight was an older fighter and a naturally smaller fighter, and Zab lit him up. But in that fight, what was so impressive to me was that Zab systematically broke him down, followed his game plan, and then landed the big punch and knocked him out. There was a difference here. He said, I'm going for it. As though he waited five, six rounds, let me try to figure this guy out, where are the openings, and then let me go for it. As opposed to what he did against Santa Cruz and when he's at his best, which is to kind of create those openings to dominate the fight on his way to going for it. Break, 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 don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. Don't push his head down, please. I think he'd be wise, meaning Zab Judah, to land a little more and keep Matisse off him. Yep, and work that jab, like you said. That right jab is doing a really good job for him. Just like right there. He causes the guy to get off balance, makes the guy show what he's gonna do every time he starts up that jab right there. Absolutely right. The right jab is the key to this fight for him. Best upstairs punch of the fight for Matisse. Right hand on the chin. Not full break, extension, break, break. not punch, his knockout punch, punch, punch but up. a good shot. Didn't bother Zab at all, it's a beautiful thing. Matisse again tries to throw the right upstairs. Blocks Judah's left hand there. Break, break, don't punch, don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. With Zab's go, defense please. in this fight, in the sense that he's not just making Matisse miss by, by getting out of there with his legs, he's catching a lot of shots on his gloves. Break, 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 don't punch, don't punch. Let him go. And he's Break keeping up. his hands up to a greater degree than Zab normally does. And his patience and his discipline is very good here, because usually at this point, he would get reckless in a fight, but now he's holding himself together, still fighting very smartly, and boxing very beautifully. And he's showing legitimate and proper respect for Matisse's 25 knockouts, and Zab has not always been that smart. That's right. Good job. question at this point is, if Zab goes on to win this, Break, no punch, is no it punch, just no to punch, kind of get go, the go, W in, in the column and move on? Or can he do something here now to create the buzz that he wants created? Well, if he beats the guy 25 and 0, I think that's a good enough. 27 and 0. 27 and 0. Don't worry about fuck him. Don't worry about none of that. Don't worry about none of that. Don't worry about none of that. Water. Give me the water. Take deep breath, relax with it. We're going to take hey. a look at a punch zone graphic, like which will demonstrate the point we made a round and a half ago, a couple rounds ago, about uh, He's He's this fight I'm being between the air game of Judah and the ground game of Matisse. Look at where the punches land on Judah. 64 body shots and one below the belt. Look at where the punches land on Matisse. Matisse, 71 punches upstairs, only 14 to the body. So they're fighting at different levels. Judah's punches are going over Matisse's punches as Matisse keeps digging to the body and Judah keeps trying to land upstairs. 42 left hooks to the body versus 42 right hands to the head. CompuBox numbers in the seventh round showed Judah threw 45 jabs in the round and Roy, you and I have already agreed that's the way to win the fight. Most definitely. And both of these guys show a very superb condition, though. They're both out early after the, after the, uh, before the right, bell break, rings. Break, break, break. They're ready to go. And uh, neither guys, one is showing, head, showing any head, uh, signs of fatigue. And our interpreter, Jerry Olaya, reporting, reporting to us that between rounds in Matisse's corner, he complained to his trainer about cramps in his legs. I mean, that was real good, Zab Judah. There it was again, catch and counter, precision and power. Two excellent left hands in the round break, by break, Judah. Break, 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 break. But again. No, no, no. You're pulling in them. You're complaining about them. a butt again. Watch your head. Come on, that's a warning. Watch your head. Now You're Earl Brown is them. warning Matisse. As Judah. I won, my one, my one. And, and was hit right. by right. the clash. Come on, come on. This right. is Let's where go. you watch to see if Judah maintains his calm, maintains his, his composure here. In the past, we've seen him do less than smart stuff in these kinds of situations when he's frustrated. Break, break, no punch, 
enjoyed you ever have an opponent you felt was purposely trying to butt you? <laughs> yeah, the last one, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, you mean Bernard? I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> Bernard, of course, watching tonight in Delaware. Hey, Bernard, how are you? <laughs> you probably texted him three minutes before we went on the air. <laughs> Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. some very good left hands this round. First round, I think he finally really caught Matisse pretty clean. things that makes 140 pounds an interesting division is that none of these guys have really taken the division by the reins. Nope. Timothy Bradley moved up to welterweight, looked less than spectacular beating Abreu. Break, break, Devin push, push, Alexander maybe lost to Katelnik and got a gift. Amir Khan's already been knocked out, though he's looked good recently against the right opponents. And here Zab is winning and looking better as the fight goes on but not really taking the division by storm at the moment. Since Amir Khan has gone into the wild card gym and been trained by Freddie Roach, the atmosphere of the division has changed. It will remain to be seen. Now, earlier tonight, former American Olympian Saddam Ali was with the star of our Beijing Olympic team. Got another win to go 10-0 early in his career, totally outclassing Gary Bergeron from New Orleans. Max, you used to watch him in Golden Gloves in New York. What about Saddam Ali? Uh, he was the dominant, along with Danny Jacobs, the dominant Golden Gloves fighter of his era. He's heavy-handed. He's a precision putting, puncher. Hands on a little more, okay? And he's been successful so far early in his pro career. Just keep boxing. You like that? And listen, don't pull back. Listen to me good. Yeah, don't pull back. Don't he see Lucas Matisse after uh, Zab starts to come in. He grabs him. He tries to hook him, but he pulls him forward. And I think that's what caused the hit but that time. He overshot him with the hook and pulled Zab towards him. And they, it caused a bad collision of the heads. And caused Earl Brown to issue a warning to Lucas Matisse. But that was the first warning. Often fighters will get two of them before a point is taken away. Harold, how do you have it <laughs> coming into the ninth? Five rounds to three, 77, 75, Zab Judah. Jim, I thought Zab Judah pulled into the lead in round seven and eight. I thought he had good, you know, good, good round around seven and eight. I would have been happy if he didn't stick out his tongue so much. He does that constantly. Break, break, don't, it's don't, funny. Don't, 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 if you watch Zab Judah, when he's going to get defensive and that punch, he'll roll that right shoulder in. He does that quite often. He'll roll the right shoulder in and he's going to cover up. He won't punch when he rolls the right shoulder in every single time. But be as it may, Zab Judah landing nice right hands, occasionally a real good left hand. He got much more aggressive in the eighth round break, before the headbutt. Punch, don't punch. Five to three, punch. Judah. Don't punch when I should let the punch, all right? The feather in Matisse's cap there is that you had it as an even fight through six rounds. There are many experts here at ringside who expected Matisse was gone by the fourth or fifth round. Break, Guys, remember punch, the punch, young Zab Judah who fought Mickey Ward? Won 12 rounds. Ward hurt him come with a body on, shot, but everyone up, Ward ever hit in the body no, 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 hurt. No, no, no. Hey, keep him up. And it was a tough fight, but Zab won almost every round. And you guys keep talking about the right jab. Break, he was break, pumping it punch, out consistently punch. in that fight. And he has to keep pumping it out here to keep it safe for himself. Look, when you have the kind of hand speed that Zab Judah has, if you're willing and assertive enough to keep throwing the jab, it's going to be very hard for any opponent to get around him. It would have to be somebody with equal hand speed and the possibility break, break, of countering. Break, break. No holding, no holding. No, you're holding him and hitting him. No holding. Go. The other good thing I like tonight is the ability of Zab to absorb Matisse's punch. So far, he's done a great job of absorbing the big punch by Matisse. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. 
1 a.m. in Newark, New Jersey. Perfect time for the fight to heat up between Zab Judah in the blue trunks and Lucas Matisse in the gray. Zab has to be careful with this hook Matisse is throwing because it's starting to land with a little bit more regularity now, and that's not a good thing. Yeah, for a guy who has only been past the fourth round once in a 28-fight career prior to tonight, Matisse hasn't slowed down a beat. No punching, no punching, no Despite the fact he was complaining about leg cramps to his trainer a couple of rounds ago. And, you know, we'll make the point again. He trained in the Oxnard, California camp of Sergio Martinez, who's made the most dramatic rise in the sport in the last couple of years, coming from more or less nowhere to become the middleweight champion of the world. And Martinez is a legendary hard worker, and Matisse obviously got some of the rub off. Good job. That's the pressure that I want. But follow it up. Follow it up. He's fucked up. When you press him, he's messed up. Where, if you let him work, he works. But press him with his mind. Press him, press him. Hit him. How are you, okay? You got hit him, tie him up. Sometimes faint, use everything you got, okay? Deep breath, do it again. Your legs, baby. He's already. He's already. Then keep by. I want your hands up. He's trying to catch you with one shot. Don't give it to him. Keep winning. We're doing great. Keep boxing. Don't worry about it if you don't see the shots. He get, he's with you. Where did go? Move your head. Oh, you got him. He's got nothing left. Well, if you listen to Judas Corner very carefully, they'll tell you that Matisse has nothing left. And if you listen to Matisse's corner carefully, they'll tell you Judah has nothing left. Truth is, both fighters have something left. Break, no punch, no punch, no punch, no punch, no punch. As we come to the tenth of a scheduled twelve. We've mentioned all the stars in the 140-pound weight class and the big fights that could conceivably await the winner. The likely next step, particularly for Judah if he wins, according to main event's promoter, Kathy Duva, would be to fight for a vacant 140-pound title against Kaiser Mabuza of South Africa. What kind of a fighter is Mabuza, Max? He's a, he's not special in terms of talent, but he's a, a rugged, determined fighter who beat the hell out of Kendall Holt. Uh, the question is how much Kendall Holt, longtime stalwart in the division, has left, and whether Mabuza was getting a really shot Kendall Holt. Hasn't fought since then. And um, on you know, in terms of talent, it's a mismatch. Oh, oh, Hard right hand by Matisse. Zab Judah goes down. What a stunning Seven. turn of events in round Eight. 10. Come on, come on. And suddenly the Argentine oh, puncher right. has made his point. Well, Zab didn't come too much. You Judah can't. comes with a right hook immediately. Don't punch. Don't punch. Looks as though Zab's going to try to fight his way through this. Judah's very dangerous here. Yeah, but he let Matisse start throwing too many punches and come at him too much. You can't let that happen. He's because allowing now. Matisse break, 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 to throw his break, right break, hand with punch, impunity. Don't punch. Don't punch. Break. Matisse does not seem bothered by Judah's power. Not at all. Break, break. No punch, no punch. He's grinning at it. Break, 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 break. No punch, no punch. That was a hard body shot. And there's a big left hook. At some point, Zab's going to have to consider holding on, Roy. Yeah, you're going to have to consider holding on very quickly here. We got one minute left in the tent. A good shot. Good up, Craig. Go punch, go punch, but, go punch. And that's why I say Zab's dangerous. He's a puncher, and he has fast hands, and he he's willing break, to break, throw break, those shots punch, when he's hurt. But Matisse is walking right through them. Yeah, he's walking right through them, but he got to still touch him and make him respect him like that. And he got to get out after he throws him. He can't throw him to stay punch, up. Punch. But Matisse is throwing good oh, counters behind him. Watch your heads, Watch your heads. You made a great point in the first fight, Roy. Really. Robert Guerrero could clearly take Vicente Escobedo's punch better than vice versa. Right now, Lucas Matisse takes Zab Judah's punch better than vice versa. Yes. But Zab got to let him throw the punches so freely. Zab got to go first. Like right there, he should have punched first. He doesn't have too much confidence coming forward. Another knockdown would make the scorecards very interesting. It's already a 10-8 round. And either thing could happen, but the bell sounds before another knockdown takes place. Now Matisse is seriously in the fight. You know what you did, right? You drop your hand, you pull straight back. 
I told you don't do that. Don't get relaxed with him. He's looking for one. Didn't I tell you looking for one? Give me this water. Now look, you still doing good. You listen, he gonna listen. Listen, but listen, listen. You pump two, three, Jim, and you time up. No, 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 you're not talking to me. You're not talking to me. The other guy's holding two. Look at him. 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 One, two, three, and don't eat the punches. Here you see Matisse coming forward. Zab allowed him to come forward too much. And he's attacking with so much regularity and confidence. They lands the overhand right, right down the side of Zab's left glove. And that caused the knockdown. A beautiful overhand right that Matisse landed. But Zell was letting him come in too freely, and he finally landed the shot he's been trying to land all night. But he scored the knockdown, play. punching through the glove block. That's power. Power punches in 10. Matisse landed 23 of 61. Now here comes round 11, and Matisse comes out firing. And he landed right here, right punch, away. Don't punch, don't punch. Zab Judah on the defensive. 11th round in Newark. Judah's attempt to regain stardom in the 140 pound weight class suddenly in a darkened room. Zab's come break, break, off the break. deck to win before. Early in his career, Teron Millette and Jan Bergman with sanctioning body belts on the line. But those were in fights he was dominating against opponents he was clearly superior to. This is a fight he has not dominated against an opponent he has not been able to establish real superiority over. Well, he has to he has to attack first. As long as he let Matisse attack first, he's going to get caught just like he's going now. Right now, punch, punch. this is becoming a one-sided fight because no. Judah's reluctant to throw because he's scared of getting hit back by the, the power that Matisse has shown in the last two rounds. And if Zab's not going to throw, he's not going to win rounds. Hard right hand by Matisse. Judah trying to get his jab back out there. Another hard right hand by Matisse. Zab backing into the ropes and taking shots. You gotta be first. You gotta get Matisse off of himself. Break, break. Don't punch, don't punch. Let him go. Let him go. How much of Zab's weariness? is the product of all those body shots in the first eight rounds. A lot of this weirdness is the product of those body shots. That's why he seems to be a little bit more tired and more fatigued than Matisse because Matisse invested a lot of body shots early, hoping to kiss Zab lately. It doesn't look as spectacular to go to the rib cage, but it's more likely to win you the fight. And this is what Zab has to do to keep Matisse from punching. Down goes Judah! And this is going to be called a push but he ate a right hand before yeah. he went down. He did eat a right hand, but if he keeps on attacking first, he won't get caught with that right hand. He has to attack first. So it's it's going to take courage to win the fight. Yes, he only have about a... About a minute to survive, but he has to survive here. He needs to attack first. Zab wobbled again there. 35 seconds to go in the round. Matisse has it all his way. Good body shot with the left hand by Lucas. Judah trying to stay on his feet and avoid another two-point round. He doesn't have long, but he does have to survive here, and he doesn't need another two-point round here. Hard right hand. Another one. And Judah holding on. There are a lot of crucial factors here. How are the first nine rounds scored? How much does Judah have left after all the body and head punishment? Hey, you want this fight? Yeah. Six minutes, go. Man. You gotta fight you for gotta six stop minutes, it. Why you keep going to the motherfucking ropes? Six minutes. You ain't keep going to the ropes. Gotta fight for Give me that water. Give me that water. Give me that water. Give me two water. more rounds, that's it. 12 rounds, give me that. 12 rounds. Full of brown now. Don't worry about it, Zap. Water. Listen to me good. Zap. Zap, the fight down. It looks like it's the last one. The same thing, the same thing. Pero, Here you see Matisse coming in. He partially lands a straight right hand there, followed by a hook to the top of, or the back of Zab's head, but then he pushes him down. So I don't think that was clearly a knockdown. I think that was clearly a push down. Matisse with a 44 to 16 edge in power shots over the last two rounds. He is strafing Judah with hard right hands and left to the body. Yeah. If Judah can keep throwing and keep Matisse off him, he may stay on his feet. 
Finish the fight. Harold, how do you have it coming to the 12? You know, Jim, it's a shame that it took until round 10 for somebody to take control of this fight. I've got it all even, 104-104. In rounds, I've got it 6-5 to five, Zab Judah, but Lucas Matisse gets an extra point for the knockdown in round 10. He dominated the 10th, he dominated the 11th, he pulled himself right back into the fight, and on my card, whoever wins the 12th round wins the fight. Let's make this clear. The graphic you saw was incorrect. The 11th round on Letterman's card was scored for Matisse, not for Judah. The score was 104-104, not 105-103. The problem Zab has now, I think, is what I identified earlier. He has not been able to create his own offense in this fight. Everything comes off of what Matisse is doing. And as a result, even now, Roy, when you say Zab has to be first, his, he's only found success when he's countered Matisse, when he's timed them. So how does he go first when he can't make the offense happen? Right. No punch, no he punch, has to go no first punch, with the no left hand. Every time he goes first with the left hand, he lands it. So if he goes with the left hand first before Matisse gets a chance to come, then he's ahead, even with the jab. Matisse was just short with a right hand that might have ended the fight. No punch, no punch. Just to make it clear, on Harold go, Letterman's scorecard, the winner of this round wins the fight. Zab's having a better round so far. Than, than he did in the 10th and the 11th. Than he's been having, yes. But he has to attack first. Right here, he can't let Matisse get off first. Zab's totally on the defensive. Matisse looks calm and collected. Great, no punching, no punching. Let him go. One minute to go. High drama in Newark. American stars have Judah trying to revive a career which has foundered in recent years, fighting right, against right. a guy not go. well known in this watch country watch prior watch to watch tonight. 140-pound weight class keeps producing surprises and stars. And wonderful fights. Is Matisse the next? Hard left hand by no Judah, no his no best punch. punch in three rounds. And that's what I said he needs to continue doing, throwing the left hand lead early, right there. That gets Matisse off, right, right. doesn't no allow punch, him no to get punch, caught no with a big punch. Matisse kept this fight close enough and then showed real power, punching through the guard of Judah to hurt him. Took control late, but handed to Zab. He picked himself up off the canvas and is fighting back hard here in the 12th round. Zab was outboxing him there for a while, but rallies like that switch it back toward Matisse. Yes, they do. Just like that in the last few seconds of the round. Who will make this point down the stretch? And the round is over. What a battle. One official knockdown in the fight. It was in the 10th round when Matisse put Judah on the canvas. What a good fight. Excellent fight. And now, Judah's bid for a return to prominence hangs in the balance. Lucas Matisse won the 10th round in Harold Letterman's card and, or excuse me, the 12th round in Harold Letterman's eyes and he won the fight on Letterman's card, 114-113. A late round rush by Walter Matisse, or Lucas Matisse, I should say, younger brother of Walter Matisse, has put this one into doubt. And now we are in total suspense as we await the scorecards. Well, the kids here's a look at the judges. Uh, excuse me, Roy. Joe Pascal, 28 title fights, had Adamic over Ariola, not a terribly difficult fight to score. Valeska Roldan, and how many times have we seen this in recent years in big fights? And you always worry. Zero title fights, no notable fights. Scary. Here's another one. Six title fights, no notable fights. So. Just this was the case with Shane Mosley against Sergio Mora in California last month. You have two extremely inexperienced judges scoring a highly significant fight, which has gone the distance, perhaps unexpectedly for the promoters and organizers, and now a big decision yet to come. Good fight, guys. Good fight. Hi, brother. Thank you.
Majority draw. Majority draw. All right, we are told that Michael Buffer's ready with the scores. Let's get him. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Well, let's go. Roldan scores it 114, 113 for Matisse. Joseph Pasquale, 114, 113 for Judah. Hilton Whitaker, 114, 113. To the winner by split decision, Zab yeah. Super yeah. Judah. Well, you may have heard somebody in the background before Michael Buffer announced the scores. We heard somebody yelling, majority draw, majority draw. That would have been a very acceptable result. It was an extremely close fight. Judah gets the nod. Matisse is going to celebrate anyway, and who can blame him? Nobody can blame him. He came. He made a great show. Uh, Zab fought a wonderful fight. It was a very good fight fought by both fighters. Nobody has nothing to be ashamed of here tonight. All three judges had Matisse winning the 12th. But at the end of the, and incidentally, I suggested an impending disaster because of the inexperience of two of the judges. All three of these are credible scorecards. You cannot say that somebody completely missed the fight. Final copy box numbers. Matisse lands 15 more punches. That margin was built in the last three rounds as he had Judah totally on the defensive. They both landed at about the same percentage. Jabs, Matisse only landing 18 out of 250. Judah landed 87 of 496. If there's a difference in the fight, that was probably it. Roy Jones and I were speculating in the middle rounds that the jab was the way for Judah to win the fight. He didn't exactly control it. Power punches, Matisse dominated. And a lot of this margin was built in the early rounds when Matisse was throwing exclusively to the body and Judah was throwing upstairs. And obviously, a great deal of the time that Zab was jabbing, Lucas was throwing power punches. And here's the punch zone, which once again makes the point we've made over and over about body versus head. Judah getting hit 99 times by body shots. Matisse only 20. That's why Matisse was so much the fresher fighter in the closing rounds. Most definitely. Rematch, Roy? I think it would be a beautiful rematch. Um, me, being honest with you, at Zab's point in his career, no. Let's go to Max Kellerman, who is standing by with Zab Judah. Congratulations on a gutty win, Zab. What about Matisse gave you the problems that he did from the beginning of the fight? First of all, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for giving me the victory right now. I mean, thank you very much, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Matista was a tough fighter. You know, like I anticipated going to this fight, I told everybody he was a tough fighter going to the fight, and I expected the fight to go down like he did. Though you seem to be, until the knockdown, pulling ahead in the fight and winning rounds, they weren't really decisive rounds. You didn't seem to be able to really hurt him or, or, or punish him the way we've seen you punish fighters in the past when you have an ability advantage. What was he doing to negate you? Um, you know, like, like I said, um, my game plan was the box. Use my jab like I did early, the jab and the hook and move around. And, um, you know, he did good with closing the distance. When he closed the distance, I tried to go for the big shots and try to knock him out, which I should have listened to my dad in, in the corner and my uncle tell me, just keep boxing. Then the knockdown occurs. We will show you the replay. In fact, your hands were up. At the time of the knockdown, he was punching through your guard. If we have the replay, we'll show you right here. Just comment. Um, yeah, you know, I was working the jab right here, staying uh, loose. And yeah, he, he, he kind of punched right through it. Um, I kind of pulled back and, I mean, listen, things happen, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, God is great. You know what I'm saying? He brought me from the bottom and brought me back to the top. That's all I can say. Punching through your guard to knock you down, can you talk about his power? Well, I mean, yeah, Batista was a very strong fighter. I mean, like I told y'all, going into the fight, I have a lot of respect for him. A lot of respect for his punch power. He came in there with a perfect record, 25 knockouts. And yeah, he's a very strong fighter. He got strong hands, heavy-handed. Yet you got up, and you continued to fight, and you finished the fight on your feet. Can you talk about your conditioning quickly? Yeah, my condition was, I mean, like, like, like I said, the condition is what kept me in the... Uh, 
in the fight. I want to thank Miles Charleston for helping me out with that. And, um, you know, like I said, um, we're going to move on and uh, just keep going on and just, just shoot for the stars. That's it. Thanks, Zab. Congratulations. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Max. So as I was throwing up to Max, you were suggesting that while a rematch is logical, it may not be the best decision for Zab Judy. You're saying that at age 33, he probably should try to find somebody other than this strong, hard, body-punching, power shot guy. Thank God for the changes that he's made. Uh, he's made a wonderful change in his whole lifestyle. And being that he's done that, now is not the time to let your pride and your ego get in the way. Move away, move on. You got past this guy, leave him alone. Go on and do bigger, better things. Let this guy come back and prove himself to, by using somebody else as a stepladder, not you. That may be true. There was nothing I saw in Judah's performance which suggested to me that he's ready to take over this division from Timothy Bradley or Devin Alexander or Amir Khan or Marcus Madonna or any of those guys. No, not at all. But he is a great competitor in the division. And he could get better. All right. Uh, you saw one Argentine tonight in Lucas Matisse. The greatest Argentine fighter of this era and the best since Carlos Monzon will be defending his middleweight championship two weeks from tonight in a rematch with Paul Williams. Last year, their December fight was a brilliant way for us to end the year. We expect yet another candidate for fight of the year. Let's get you ready for it. Nearly one year ago, two of the pound for pound best, Paul the Punisher Williams and Sergio Martinez faced off against each other. Martinez was a clear underdog after taking the fight as a late replacement for Kelly Pavlik. But in just one round, these two set the stage for one of boxing's best fights of 2009. Oh! And down he goes on a left hand to the temple. Hard right hand, and Williams goes down. And Martinez has evened the round. Brilliant. Both fighters tasted the canvas in round one. This is turning out to be a tremendous fight. And now Martinez blocks Williams with the left, and Williams fires back, oh. and they're trading shots. What a savage exchange in the middle of the ring. Amazing. After 12 tumultuous rounds, Williams was awarded a majority decision in a fight that demanded an encore. While negotiations for return engagement were at a standstill, the fighters moved on. Williams went on to beat Kermit Sintron in a bizarre technical decision win. And now they both go out of the ring, and Sintron has taken a horrific fall off the edge of the canvas onto the floor. And this junior middleweight bout has come to an end. And Sergio Martinez shocked middleweight champion Kelly Pavlin. The left hand by Martinez. And another, and another. And he is bloodying Kelly Pavlin. Hard left hand by Martinez. Look at Kelly Pavlik's face, a bloody mask. And Martinez is showboating. Solid left hand lands for Martinez. And another combination. Pavlik can't see the punches coming. Nearly one year later, boxing gets its highly anticipated rematch. Sergio Martinez may have been the underdog the first time, but now he owns the middleweight crown. And on November 20, he renews his rivalry against Paul the Punisher Williams. Max, you, uh, you and I covered that fight together a year ago, and I have a hunch that Paul Williams and his trainer George Peterson somewhat underestimated Sergio Martinez last year, maybe even severely underestimated him. Now they know, but knowing doesn't mean you can do anything about it. The best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world and the fight everyone wants to see are Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Manny Pacquiao. But Floyd Mayweather seems reluctant, obviously, to fight Manny Pacquiao or maybe anyone at this moment. And Manny Pacquiao, top rank, has figured out that they can just keep feeding him top rank fighters. He doesn't have to fight the best pound for pound fighters in the world, and they can make a fortune. So after Mayweather and Pacquiao, the two best pound for pound fighters in the world are Sergio Martinez and Paul Williams. They fought a fight of the year type fight last year. They're going to rematch coming up in a couple of weeks in what promises to be another classic fight. These are the two best fighters in the world who are actually fighting each other, and I couldn't be more excited to see them do it again. Yeah, part of the downside of the focus on Mayweather Pacquiao is that a fight like this doesn't get as much attention probably as it deserves. Years from now, we'll probably still be talking about Sergio Martinez and Paul Williams. Right. All right. Thanks very much, Max. It was a great uh, show here in Newark tonight. We were glad to have you with us. Robert Guerrero, who won the first fight, incidentally, tells us that he broke his left hand. Uh, and you saw Lucas Matisse make an impressive showing in America tonight and stamp himself as a possible future star in the division with the show he put up in losing basically a one-point decision to Jab Judah. If you've missed any part of tonight's telecast, you can catch it in its entirety at the dates and times listed below. Also go to HBO.com starting Wednesday. 
Wednesday for new installments of Ring Light, focusing on Sergio Martinez and Paul Williams as they prepare for that fight on the 20th. Next on HBO, it's 24-7 Pacquiao Margarito, followed by Boardwalk Empire. Turn your clocks back tonight. Get an extra hour of sleep tomorrow morning. For our entire crew, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from Newark, New Jersey. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.